So, good morning to you. So, um, really, what I want to try and do is help a little bit with this ROI question that's just come up um, and see whether I can provide some sort of direction on it. It may not be quite the one that you're thinking. Don't know. Let's see how we go. So, um, in terms of the session today, uh, I want to cover off uh, a number of things. I, I want to start off by putting what we've done into a bit of context. So who are we first? Um, why do we do wellness? What's, what's, what's the thing for the company in terms of wellness? How we approached it early on and how we now approach it? Because um, it's evolved and it's that evolution, I think, that's got some, some learning points in there potentially for people who are starting up. Some of those learning points are going to be how not to do it, I've got to say. So um, uh, we're not the greatest role model, though I do think we've got to a good place today. I'm then going to talk about this return on investment. I'm also going to talk about something called value of investment, um, which I think may be a little bit more pertinent to people in the UK. Okay? I've got a very short summary and, and hopefully some time for some questions. So that's the, uh, that's the plan. Let's, uh, let's sort of see how it goes. So, okay, who are we? So firstly, um, we're part of something called the Cooper Companies. Um, so um, Cooper Companies is really made up of two different um, organisations. Um, Cooper Surgical. Cooper Surgical um, make uh, things for um, gynaecologists um, and operating theatre. Uh, equipment. Um, so it's a little different to what we do as Cooper Vision. Uh, we make contact lenses, um, but medical devices in all cases. That's the sort of link there. Cooper Companies um, is an uh, American company um, uh, quoted on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, let's give you a little bit of dimension. So Cooper Companies annual turnover last year, $1.8 billion. Cooper Vision tuning down to that part of it, employ about 9,000 people globally, and we have about 2,500 in the UK. 2 billion contact lenses per year, which is a number that generally sort of surprises people, but um, a lot of contact lenses being made. That 2 billion gives us 22% of the global market share and makes us the third largest contact lens company worldwide. Um, and we're very proud because what we do is produce a very wide range of products um, and we can fit most people's um, eyesight um, needs. Um, you probably never heard of Cooper Vision, certainly until I joined the company I, I'd never heard of them. Um, third largest company, big employer in, in the sort of Southampton area, I'll show you where we are in a minute, um, but I'd never heard of them. And uh, well, why is that? Well, whereas we market things under our own name, an awful lot of what we market is own label uh, product. Um, so if you have Specsavers contact lenses or Boots own label contact lenses, almost certainly we've made them. Um, so um, that's a little bit about us anyway. So where are we? Well, around the world, a um, bit of a map there. Um, we've got some stuff in, in, in the States, in California, which is where the head office is, and also the um, 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 R&D facility there but manufacturing in um, Puerto Rico and in Costa Rica um, and other locations, um, much smaller locations. But within the UK, um, we're really focused on the Southampton area um, in Hamble um, and in Chandler's Ford and also in Fareham, Southampton. Um, and uh, we also have a site in, in Ashford in Kent. So um, that's our 2,500 people in the UK and the population I'm really now going to talk about in the main. So, okay, why do we do wellness? What's the background to all this? Well, it's a US company. Um, so it is this thing that was talked about earlier about focusing on medical insurance cost reduction. Uh, medical insurance costs a big part of the cost of employing people in the States. Um, it's something you, in practice, have to offer as a benefit. Um, but it costs a lot of money. It's going up and going up and going up um, for the reasons that um, were, were discussed in the um, plenary session earlier. Um, that was the initial focus. So it's purely about cost reduction. Now that um, started off with what was 
described as a global, and I put global in inverted commas, um, walking program, a virtual walking program. So one of these computerised things where you encourage people to walk in a virtual way from A to B, you're tracking their progress, it's a bit of a race, who gets there first, who does the most steps along the way, um, and uh, you give them a... Uh, um, a pedometer so they can measure those steps. So you've got a bit of an employee giveaway there. Um, so that's how it sort of started. Um, global, well, what's global mean? You've just seen some of our locations. Uh, and in addition to those locations, which are sort of physical sites, we've got salespeople in most countries of the world. So we're, we're pretty, pretty well spread. What's global mean? Well, global really meant USA and the UK. Why the UK? Um, well, simply, uh, we speak English, um, sort of English anyway, I suppose, compared to the Americans, and um, it was felt that was a place to push this to. Um, and it was pushed. It wasn't something that was asked for in the UK, it was pushed. It didn't land very well. Okay? Um, so, no real buy-in from the UK management. They didn't own it, they didn't want it, it was forced upon them. Um, employees were sort of bought, I think is the truth of it. Um, everybody got a pedometer. Um, that's, that's nice. Good, you know, Christmas gift for the kids or the nephew or whatever it might be. Um, not sure how many really got used. But there were some significant prizes. Um, this gave us a bit of a problem because um, there's no budget in the UK for this. Um, prizes, global prizes, which would actually be paid for by whichever country um, won the prize, the employee won the prize. First prize was a Caribbean cruise. Um, the second prize was a 70-inch TV. Now, I can say, I, I question, 70-inch TV, this is a wellness program, and sort of couch potatoes and things, it's not... So that got modified, so it became 70-inch um, TV with a wee fit. <laughs> it was progress. Um, I talked to some of our senior leaders in the UK about this and said, look guys, this is what's coming. Um, this is what you're expected to do. And if somebody from the UK wins this, by the way, um, you're paying for the Caribbean cruise or 70-inch TV and we fit and um, various other prizes. And I said, look, you know, we haven't got a budget. We're not doing that. Just forget it. So... OK, we're in the politics now because this has come from pretty senior people in the, in the Cooper companies and not really the people you go back and say no to. So we, we, the, the direction to me was, you need to do it, but you know, we're not going to have a, you know, prizes like that in the UK. So I said, OK, I've got no budget, what can I do? So I told, told the senior guys we would be offering prizes. Um, the prize is going to be a bag of apples. Yeah, bag of apples. They said, well, hang on, we, we can't offer a bag of apples if they're offering Caribbean being cruises and um, big TVs and things in the States. We'd look silly, yes. Um, and, OK, we went with this. And um, thank goodness nobody from the UK won the prizes. <laughs> um, but we did get some participation, not perhaps as much as we might have liked, but we did get some participation, it did start generating some interest. So it, it did a job for us. It was, it was useful in that sense. So then developed on a little bit. Okay, so Ruby. Let me tell you about Ruby. Um, Ruby um, is now retired. She retired a couple of years ago at age 79. Okay. Um, she was an employee in the US and she's in fact vice president of HR for the Cooper Companies. Now the Cooper Companies holding company is what we're talking about. Um, that consists of a grand total of about 50 people. Um, but what she also looked after was the benefits program for the USA. Um, so on that basis, she had an interest in getting cost of medical insurance down. That was the initial driver. But then, um, unfortunately, some years back, and we're talking around the year 2010, 2009 perhaps, um, Ruby developed diabetes. She's in her early 70s developed diabetes. Um, she was rather overweight. She was a bit of a caricature American lady, if I can say that. I probably can't say that, but um, she was a little overweight, to say the least. Um, and she decided to 
take things into hand and she um, um, didn't want to be on, on uh, drugs. She wanted to deal with her diabetes through improving her health. So she lost a massive amount of weight, did an awful lot of sort of fitness stuff to, to get herself fit and got off the diabetes drugs. So she's a real success story. Very inspirational lady, really nice lady, very determined person, as you can imagine. Now, part of that determination was she then said, well, OK, if I can do this, maybe I can help other people in the company do it. Um, she had a very good relationship with our CEO. Um, she'd worked with him for a good number of years. Um, she'd been with the company for somewhere over 40 years and really grown up with a lot of the senior guys in the company. So she, she had she had their ear I suppose um, and she started um, talking about wellness and she got buy-in from our CEO um, and it very much fits with our company ethos because you know we are um, a healthcare company that's what we do it's either surgical products um, or contact lenses so it's to do with employee health um, we're, like a lot of companies, we say employees are our number one asset. Um, I do think we, we mean that. That's demonstrated in a whole variety of ways. Um, so it's great that we demonstrate that, I think. Wellness fits in with that. Um, part of our branding is we describe ourselves as a quality of life company. And that's really looking at quality of life for our customers, our end customers. Um, but we spin that back in now to employees. We want to look after our employees as well as part of being a quality of life company. And part of the, um, the um, mantra, whatever we want to call it, of Cooper Vision is we help people see better each day. So that's a pretty nice way of positioning people when they come to work. That's what you're here to do. You're not just here to stand at a machine and produce contact lenses. You're actually here to help people see better. That's a, that's a pretty good sort of aspiration, I think. So it fits in with us. But despite that, still no real buy-in from the UK. We're beginning to get some traction. What do we do next then? OK. So we took a much more holistic approach in the UK. So we, we, we got together um, a committee of people, um, senior people from different divisions across the, uh, across the uh, company, and we really sort of looked at how we could make this fit better for the UK. And the idea was this much more holistic approach, something that's much, much rounder. And really, I suppose, you, you could see it as transitioning from wellness, which is a bit of an American word. It's, it's sort of caught on in the UK now, I think. But well-being would have been sort of um, UK word some time back, I think, rather than wellness. Um, I'm not sure that's the right way to describe this, but I, I, I see it as a transition. Um, wellness into well-being. Um, as our committee of people, we came up with the idea of some pillars, and we've heard about pillars in the last presentation, so that's, that's great to sort of follow on from that. Um, but the pillars we came up with were, were these I've got listed out. And um, that was fine. But this committee of people was not really the right committee of people to take this further. Because um, basically, we had an HR person, it was myself. Uh, we had a finance person, you always need a finance person. Um, and a load of engineers and um, a couple of scientists. Um, so not creative people in, in the sense of people that could come up with a way of succinctly getting this idea across to employees. So we came up with a um, genius idea, really. We invited somebody from marketing to join us. Um, and uh, I thought they'd uh, just sort this out themselves. The reality is they called in a favour from a mate um, in a creative agency that we use. And we came up with some, some branding. So we'll come on to that in just a sec. So the branding that we came up with for the UK actually became global and became a transition in approach to a, an holistic approach globally. Um, so that's, that's a real sort of um, something we're really proud of, just pushing this back to the States. So we sort of, um, you know, it's a sort of snow to Eskimos type, uh, type thing, I suppose. So quite pleased with that. Um, 
And what's happening now is we really are making this global. So we have wellness programs in the Americas, um, in Europe and in a variety of languages across Europe and also in Asia. Um, so um, we're really becoming properly global with this now. So, okay, the, um, the wellness, My Wellness is the brand that we created. I say we created, the guys from marketing came up with this. Um, that's the tagline that we use, there's more to work, there's My Wellness. Um, we have some pillars, as I mentioned earlier, okay? So, okay, My Environment. So this is really, um, well, I'll go through these in a little more detail, thinking about my environment, my health, my activities, my benefits, and my support. So in some more detail, my environment, well, really, I guess what we want is to have a safe, supportive, and welcoming work environment for people. So this is where things like um, car parking, bike schemes, chilled water, those sorts of things come in. Um, health. Everybody wants to lead a healthy life, um, but sometimes people need a bit of support. So here we have things like stopping smoking sessions, um, weight loss, um, the free fruit. Um, that's probably the worst thing we've ever done, by the way, free fruit, because I get more arguments over fruit than anything else. Yeah. Somebody stole my banana. I, I mean, seriously, we, we, we get this. It's, it drives me around the bend. I wish we'd never started the free fruit. Um, so that's health. My activities. Um, so this could be a charity event of some sort or a family fun day. Uh, we really want to have a sociable, fun, supportive culture. My benefits. Um, so childcare vouchers, life assurance, pensions, um, those sorts of things. We produced a total reward statement recently for the first time. Um, that was uh, an interesting thing, but it, it was done in the context of wellness. So and my support, okay, so everybody needs a bit of help from time to time. So this is where things like um, EAP comes in. Um, we provide some financial advice, um, not to the extent perhaps we uh, could or should, but uh, we, we operate some things like um, you know, pension advice sessions where we have one of our suppliers come in and um, bookable appointments on a one-to-one -one basis with, with employees. And we also do things like pre-retirement um, sessions. So that's, that's the background. So return on investment. Okay, so, okay, a nice equation there. What is return on investment? I just thought I should throw this in because it's really just a ratio. It's, it's what do you get out for what you put in? Um, does it work? Is it the right thing? Um, I think the answer is it depends. So that's the maybe disappointing bit for people because I'm hedging my bets here, I, I, I think. Return on investment, I think, is fine in the States where you can... You've got a nice easy measure, which is, is my health cost, you know, cost of my health insurance going down? Is it, is it doing something that I can, I can measure that's going in the right way? Um, for the UK, we don't have that. We don't have health insurance in the same sense as the Americans because we have the health service. Um, so we're in a different place. Um, so that type of measure, I don't think works very well for us. Um, I think the question is, why are you actually running a wellness program? What's the reason for doing it? It's not about reducing healthcare costs. It's a, it has to be about other things or it just doesn't work. So the answer is push this back to the board. The question was how do you get board buy-in? Well, start with them in the first place. Um, ask your board. I think if you go and ask the board, well, what do you think wellness will do for the business? What do you expect from wellness? you're going to get a whole load of answers. It could be lower health care costs, it could be lower absence, it could be to do with turnover, or attraction, so on. A whole load of things here. Not sure what the right answer is. It depends on the business. I don't think there's a, um, use an American phrase, a cookie-cutter approach to come in here at all. It's, it depends on your business what, what 
the board think is important because if they think these things are important um, they're going to be engaged with it they're going to give give you support so that's I think what you call value of investment because we're looking at a range of different things how do you measure that well multiple measures because the reality is those questions on the previous slide those responses on the previous slide I think you're going to get several ticks against those different boxes there. So it's, it's a multiple sort of measures. Um, maybe these sorts of things. Maybe it's to do with productivity. So, um, you know, absence, output, things like that. It could be surveys. Do people feel supported? It could be turnover. It could be cost to attract people. It could be work quality and so on. And, and I think, again, it's ask. You know, go back to the board. Do you think health and wellness has anything to do with productivity? Now, I suspect you ask that direct sort of question, and the answer is, well, yes. Can you explain exactly what it is and how it will track and how we can measure it? Well, that's a bit harder, but at least if you've got the relationship there and there are other productivity measures in the company, um, you can start tracking those and see whether there is an impact. But you're making the relationship in the, in the um, eyes of the board. So that's value of um, investment. So summary, really. Okay, I think it's about co communication with and buy-in from management, um, just getting them on board. Um, that's come out of a number of sessions already, I think. Um, the wellness goals need to be business goals. They really shouldn't be separate. It's, it's what does the business want, where does the business want to go, how does wellness help, does wellness help. No cookie cutter approach, as we said earlier. Um, needs to be part of the culture. Um, it's, it's really got to get ingrained and how do you get it ingrained? Um, I think it's over a long period of time, it's like any culture change. Uh, it's not a, a quick thing, it's not an easy thing. It takes a period of time and you're going to get knocked down and have to pick yourself up and get on with it. It's not an easy thing to do. ROI, as we said earlier, not sure that can really work in the UK. And um, we've got more data um, to support this wider value of investment approach um, and data that's probably already there rather than having to go out and, uh, and, and uh, find it, find ways of doing it. And, okay, strong, effective, consistent leadership. I think that's the absolute thing, the absolute key here. Um, as I said, there, you know, it will not go right. This will get derailed. It will um, you know, go off in the wrong direction. You won't get the responses that you want along the way. It's about being persistent with it. Um, it's about locking down whatever budget you may have uh, and making sure that is properly ring-fenced so that in more difficult times that if they come along, um, that budget is there. It's an important budget. It's a long-term strategy for the company. So um, I did some research on return on investment as, as part of preparing for this. Um, came across this guy called Ron Goetzel, who's um, with John Hopkins University in the States. Um, there is an excellent webinar. Now, there's the link in this slide. I'm not going to show this now. Um, it's a, like a half hour webinar, really recommend this. Um, I believe the slides are going to be um, circulated. Um, if um, that turns out not to be the case, email me, I will send you that link. Um, so andrew.brown at coopervision.co.uk and I will send you that link. Okay. Um, I do recommend that, um, that's, uh, that's a really good piece of material. So, um, final thought, we talked about strong leadership. So, our CEO, Bob Weiss, wellness is the number two on his list of objectives for this year, and indeed was for last year as well. And um, it's being cascaded down to our leaders um, as part of this year's objective um, flow. And um, it's, 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 you know, I say, his number two objective um, the guy gets bonused on this. Um, so that's an interesting way of capturing hearts and minds by putting it into people's bonus, and that's coming through the company as well. 
um, but we have achieved some proper management buy-in from uh, the other activities that we've done that are a wider holistic approach. So with that, uh, questions? Thank you, Andrew. Um, we've got time for one quick question. Um, so we'll just have a look at the, the screen. Let's pick one there. Uh, it's going to be the most popular one. So not all of my employees have all of our benefits. How can I use this data to get board buy-in when it only represents one third of our workforce? It's an interesting question there. Okay, you know, that's a very a interesting question. Um, so um, we're in a similar situation. Not all of our employees have all of our benefits. Mainly they do. Um, but with some things like medical insurance coming at management level um, and, and so on. Um, I think the reality is that um, um, people do get benefits and, and it's, it's amazing what benefits people actually get when you start really thinking it through. Um, one, of the, one of the benefits we put on our list, as an example, is free car parking. Um, now that might not sound like a big benefit depending on where you're working. Um, uh, where, where we work, it's, it's something we can do and it's very easy, doesn't actually cost us anything. Um, but we do pull a lot of people as, as employees out of the centre of Southampton where you have to pay for car parking if you're working for an employer there. Um, it's just the nature of it. It's actually quite a big attraction, so that's a, that's a sort of easy one to do. But we've got lots of other things, of course. We've got, um, we've got pensions. Everybody's got pensions now, I guess, because of auto enrolment. Um, you know, we have life assurance that covers all employees. That's a very cheap benefit to buy. A um, whole range of different things, things like the free fruit and so forth. So you can start building things up just with what you actually do. Um, I, I think it's really work with what you have. Um, it may not be ideal, but make sure people understand the value of it. Okay, okay. thank you very much, Andrew.